Did you know that there's a resurgence in popularity in a design of furniture that was created over 100 years ago? Well, it was called the Arts and Crafts Movement, and it was a simpler, less ornate answer to the Victorian-style furniture that was available at the time. This chest of drawers, for example, is a mission or craftsman-style piece that was made over 100 years ago. This was made just this year. I'm with Carolyn Audie of the Stickley Furniture Company, and she's going to tell us why craftsman or mission-style furniture has endured so well. The key to its success is in its simplicity. And you can see, looking at the design, it's very architectural in form, very angular. It's also incredibly sturdy. It's built of solid quarter sawn white oak. And to really appreciate quarter sawn white oak, you have to look at the grain pattern. We cut the wood at a diagonal, so you get this special ray flake effect. Yeah, it's got a lot of character. It sure does. And another thing that's very important to arts and crafts furniture is the joinery techniques used. This is called mortise and tenon construction. You actually have a tenon that goes all the way through that post, so it's not just a glued-on piece of wood. Here's the tenon, and that fits into a rectangular opening called a mortise, and then it's pinned with a wooden dowel, and that also has glue on it, just to give it extra strength. So this really is one of the hallmarks of craftsman-style furniture, is the solid joints that make it so That's strong. That's right. The resurgence of mission-style furniture can be greatly attributed to Carolyn's parents, Alfred and Amini Audi. In 1974, they bought the Stickley Furniture Company from the widow of Leopold Stickley, one of four brothers who developed the mission-style of furniture at the turn of the 20th century. When the Audis took over, mission-style furniture hadn't been produced in nearly 60 years. It had gone out of vogue with the early American and Art Deco movements of the 1920s. Plus, the company was near bankruptcy and still operating this outdated manufacturing plant in Fayetteville, New York. Well, Alfred, 1974, you took over this factory. What did you inherit? Well, we had a real mess on our hands. A leaky roof, coal-fired furnace, no maintenance had been performed in about 15 years, demoralized workforce of older people. And uh, what we needed to do was to pump some adrenaline in there, get some young blood, some good young people trained, and to think positively and plan carefully. Now, when you bought this factory, a lot of people didn't give you very good odds that you would succeed. Now, some of the experts said it was a one in 10 shot, but I thought it was worth it even for that. Really, why? Well, my love for the product. I think it's one of the greatest products in the world, and uh, we're excited about making it. The consumer wants it, and our challenge is just to keep the quality high and to make enough product. It was in 1989 when the Audis made the decision to reintroduce the mission style of furniture. Mrs. Audi, this is such great looking furniture. Whatever inspired you to reintroduce a line of furniture that was over 100 years old? Steve, you're right, this is great furniture. When we bought Stickley in 1974, there were many great mission pieces in the basement of the old Fayetteville factory. We concentrated then on reissuing early American pieces that were very popular in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And we always knew that one day we will reissue Mission. When was the defining moment? I mean, when was you inspired to say, the time is now? Well, it was in the late 80s. We were in a brand new building. People were ready for something that is simple, that's comfortable, that's durable like Mission. And there was a very special auction in New York where the, at Christie's, where the Furnishings belonging to Gustav Stickley that were inherited by his grandson, Peter Wiles, were auctioned. Among these pieces was a very special 10-foot-long sideboard or buffet that he designed for his house in Syracuse. Oh. The bidding was very exciting, and Barbara Streisand paid $363,000 for that sideboard. That is amazing. Well, this furniture is so comfortable. For example, um, this piece is deceptively comfortable. What's, what is the story behind this? Well, this is the Prairie Saddle, and it was one of the original 33 pieces that we reissued in 1989. It was originally designed in 1910 by Leopold Stickley, and it's made out of quarter sawn white oak, magnificent horizontal surface here. And the Morris chair. Fabulous my favorites. Piece. Fabulous. This is a Gustav Stickley design originally in 1905, and it has four reclining positions, a great spindles, the corbels, the tenons. It's made to last for generations. And it looks like it. Absolutely. Very inviting as well. And with the new millennium, the Audis are introducing a 21st century line of mission-style furniture. Well, Edward, design trends come and design trends go. What do you see happening in your company over the next hundred years? Well, as these design trends come and go, we need to be very sensitive to what they are. 
we do that by listening directly to consumers and working with interior designers and really keeping a finger on the pulse of what's happening in the design world. This is a design product of that, right? This 21st century dining table is a perfect example of that. While Mission is still tremendously popular, we've taken it in a whole new direction with the 21st century designs. This is a combination of Frank Lloyd Wright, Gus Stickley, and Charles Rennie McIntosh. So, when you look at furniture like this, you look at all the different designs and things you can offer, you still stick with your traditional Stickley design, but you also offer others that reflect some of that in each product. We're always looking for, for new directions to go in. We're very proud of our past, but we're always looking to build on it for the future.